Hi, best first graders. Happy Thursday, May 21st, 2020. I have some exciting things to share with you from your classmates. First is Madison's rainbow writing. Very nice, Madison. I love how you're using all three colors to make a pattern with your name. Great job. Alana sent me her Think Outside the Box Tuesday, and she said half of the sheep reminds me of a house. Beautiful work. And then she sent us also her rainbow writing. It looks fantastic. Great job. Um, Madison, oh. oh yeah, we already looked at this one. Madison sent us the hotel. So today for snap words, you are typing. So let's practice saying them together. I'm gonna say it and you're gonna say it. Ready? The, here, were, and, them, two. All right, so feel free to type those and send them to me if you have a tablet, if you have a computer, whatever it is. All right, we are still talking about um, our spoonbills and cranes. Um, and let's review some of the words that we talked about. The first one is wetlands. You say it. Wetlands. And wetlands are what? They're swampy marshlands. And that's where our um, birds live. Mate, you say it. Mate, and mate means that they have babies. Next is hooting, you say it. Hooting, and hooting is a particular kind of noise. Chicks, you say it. Chicks, good job, they are baby birds. All right, so I want you to pause and read the story to a family member or to yourself. If you have no one around you, go back to yesterday's video and listen to me read it again. So now is a good time to pause so you can read it another time. Good, okay, so we're gonna do the same things with our questions that we did last um, yesterday. We are restating the entire question. It's not a page in our kitty workbook. We are writing the questions ourselves, so good for us. The first question is, what do spoon bills look like? Yesterday, we answered the question, what do cranes look like? Today, we're going to talk about what spoonbills look like. So to restate my question, to restate my question, I'm just starting the sentence with spoonbills. So go ahead and in your notebook, write number one and write the word spoonbills. Good, so I wanna tell um, what they look like. So I'm gonna go back in the text. This is a right there question. It should be right in my question, right in my text. All right, so in my reader I have, that's a spoonbill. He has that name because his bill is shaped like a spoon. And that's pretty much all they share about what spoonbills look like. So, to finish my answer, spoonbills have, this might be too light, spoonbills have bills, that's like their beak, that are shaped. like spoons. Period. Alright, that's what I want you to write. Spoonbills have bills that are shaped like spoons. If you're not quite done, go ahead and pause it. You can fill that in and I'm going to move on to question two. Okay, so the second question is, Why is it helpful to have a bill shaped like a spoon? Now, this is not a right there question. We have to think about this question. Why would it be helpful for those birds to have a spoon-shaped bill? Now, it's not in the text, but I can get some clues from the text. So let's go back to where they talk about the spoon bill. And the second paragraph talks about that bill. 
A spoonbill wades in pools to get his food. So he just stands in the water waiting for food. He swings his bill back and forth. If he feels an insect swimming inside his bill, he snaps it shut. Hmm. So let's take a look here. Look at the shape of his bill. Do you think it's easy to catch insects with that bill? What if his bill was more like um, a V shape? Could more insects get in this or more insects get in this? Yeah, probably the spoon. So why is it helpful to have that wide bill? What does it help him do? Can't hear you. What does it help him do? Catch insects, that's right. He needs to be able to get more food. If his beak was skinny and narrow, then he couldn't get as many insects because it's wide and large. It's easier for him to catch them. So to restate your question, you are writing, it is helpful to, and go ahead and pause because I'm gonna move on. It is helpful to catch insects, or we could even push ourselves and write catch prey. So that is your answer. It is helpful to catch insects. It is helpful to catch insects. Okay, I'm gonna move on to the next one. So if you still need more time, please pause the video. All right, next, the last question is also a thinking question. How are sandhill cranes and spoonbills alike? How are they similar to each other? Hmm, so I'm restating the question. They are alike. So that's question three. They are alike. If I'm going too fast, please just pause my video or rewind it. You don't have to keep up with me, but because I can't see you, I don't know how quickly or slowly you're writing. So just pause the video, that's totally fine. So they are alike. Now this is not a right there question. It's a question that I have to make an inference. I have to use my schema, which we talk about all the time, that's what you already have in your brain and what the author told us in the text to decide how they are alike. So what do they have in common? Well, they both live in wetlands. They're both tall birds. That's it. That's, choose one of those things. They are alike because they live in wetlands. There's lots of other things you could write. Let's see, this one eats insects. The other one eats frogs, snakes, and insects. That's another similarity. They both eat insects. They're both meat eaters. That's something you could write. They're both birds. They live in wetlands. Um, they live at this zoo. That's another thing you could write. So I wrote, they are alike because they live in wetlands. If you can think of something else, please write it. You can always do more, but you can't do less. Okay, so we are done with the Spoonbill and Crane story. We talked about so many great things about it. Oh, look, I have my mom here with me. She's teaching with me today. All right, let's move on to measurement, which I am so sad we're not together because this would be a really fun lesson to do in the classroom. But we are being flexible. So let's um, label shortest, medium, middle, and tallest. So here we have these little inchworms, I think, which is perfect because we're talking about measurement. 
Which is the longest inchworm? Is it A, B, or C? Which one is the longest? B, you got it. Which one is the shortest? A, B, or C? It's C, great job. And which one's in the middle? A, B, or C? A, nice work. Okay, you can see middle is the top, the longest is the middle, and the shortest is on the bottom. Okie doke. Here we have, they kind of look like Christmas trees or kind of like shaved ice holders, you know what I mean? So we have A, B, or C. Which one is the longest? A, B, or C? A, excellent. Which one is the shortest? A, B, or C? C, very good. And which one is in the middle? It's B, beautiful word. Okay, we got one more. These look like very nice new expo markers. So which of these markers is the tallest or longest? Those are synonyms. The middle one, right? Very good. And which one, it's kind of hard to tell on the computer. Which one is the shortest? The last one, yeah, very good, she said. Hair shorter. And which one is in the middle? Good, good job, the very farthest one, the very first one, excellent. Okay, we are going to do some measuring using um, some paper clips. And you can do this at home. I didn't know if you had paper clips, but you could use anything. You could measure with Legos, you could measure with post-it notes, um, anything that you have around the house that you have a bunch of. I happen to have paper clips, so we're gonna measure a few items at my house and we're gonna use paper clips. This is not a unit of measurement, really. You wouldn't go to the doctor and get measured and they would say, well, Trent is 56 paper clips tall or Aubrey is 25 paper clips tall. We are just practicing measuring and seeing how long things are using an unusual unit of measurement. So you can see this paper clip and I'm gonna point my computer um, down. All right, so I'm gonna start with this tube of paint, this container of paint, and I'm going to use my paper clips to measure how long it is. So I'm gonna start at the very end of the item. I don't want it to be in the middle of the item. I want the end of the paper clip and the end of the item to line right up. All right, so there's one. Do I need more or less paper clips? More, very good. All right, now I'm gonna put my other paper clip right at the end of the first paper clip. I don't want any gaps in between the paper clips. So now I have one, two paper clips. Do I need more or is this enough? More, right, very good. All right, I need to line them up perfectly. Ooh. So this tube of paint is one, two, three paper clips long. How many paper clips long is it? Three, very good. All right, let's try something longer. All right, I have my fancy teacher marker. And is this probably gonna be more or less paper clips than the paint? Is it probably going to be more or less than the paint? Probably more. All right, let's count. So I'm lining it right up. This is exactly what you would do with a ruler as well. I want the ends and the ends to be lined up. All right, so do I need more paper clips? Yeah, I think so. All right, one, two. Do I need more? Mm-hmm. Three. Four. Oop, I'm so close to the other end. And five. Ooh, okay, so I have five paper clips long. That's how long my marker is. It's five paper clips long. And that is shorter than my one, two, three paper clip long paint. All right, and here's the last object I'm going to measure. It's a binder clip. You can tell I got my stuff out of my office. All right, so let's measure. Do you think this is going to be the longest shape or the shortest? 
probably the shortest. Great job. All right. So I have one. Ooh, and it's a little less than two paper clips long. It's maybe like one and a half paper clips long. Awesome. So I want you to using something in your house, maybe Legos, that would probably be perfect. Measure at least three items. You can measure your toys, you could measure um, a fork, uh, anything that you can get your hands on, but make sure you clean it up for your parents so if you're not making a mess at your house. All right, um, I hope that you got to listen to Harry Potter yesterday and that you really liked that. I'm about to read some more for you now and look, I have on a Harry Potter shirt, so it's perfect that I'm going to read it. So, I miss you guys. I will see you in two minutes when I read Harry Potter, okay?